Hello everybody, welcome back to this channel. In this episode we're going to be solving a Physics 7D momentum practice problem, the astronaut and the watermelon. As usual, if you're finding this content helpful, leave a like and subscribe, it helps this channel a lot. So feel free to pause the video in order to copy the entire problem statement, this is kind of a long one. But the situation basically goes as follows. So you are in outer space drifting to the right as shown in the picture. You happen to be holding a heavy rock, so you start with a rock in your hand. There is also a stationary watermelon floating in space, so it's not moving, it's just there. And you really, really, really want to get that watermelon. The rock has mass <coughs> The rock has a mass m, the mass of the watermelon is 2m, twice the mass of the rock, your mass is 9m, 9 times the mass of the rock. So the first part of the problem is, you drift while holding the rock towards the watermelon, and you're going with an initial speed of 1.2 meters per second. When you reach the watermelon, you grab it. You use a momentum chart to help you solve for your velocity after you grab the watermelon. Note, the watermelons and your position have the same y value. So as you can see, I have everything written down here in my notes. So I have uh, divided my notes into part one and part two. So let's just go ahead and do part one first. So on part one, you basically, um, this is you on the rock and you basically are moving and the watermelon is not moving. And then you grab the watermelon. So now it's three objects stuck together and you are still moving. Um, here is information from the problem. Mass of the rock is going to be M. Mass of watermelon is 2M and your mass is nine times M. And we basically need to solve for um, your final velocity. So let's just go ahead and do that. Usually the first thing that I like to do with these problems is separate my vectors into X and Y components. However, all of this motion is happening within the same axis. So all of this motion is happening uh, on the X axis. So I really, there's really no need to do that for this part of the problem. Um, all I have to do is start multiplying masses times um, velocities in order to start getting momentums. So my initial momentum or your initial momentum is your mass times your initial velocity. So that is going to be uh, 9 m times 1.2 and that is going to be 10.8 kilograms meters seconds. Um, the initial momentum of the rock is going to be mass of rock, velocity initial rock, and the rock is only 1m, so m times 1.2, and that is going to be equal to 1.2 kilograms meters per second. The initial momentum of the watermelon is equal to zero because the watermelon is not moving. So let's just go ahead and put this information. Um, oh, and these are all multiplied by m. I forgot to add the m's. So this is 10.8 m. This is 1.2 m. And then this is zero and they have to add up going down. So that is going to be 12 m total like this now um, everything is happening in space and there is no mention in the problem about any external forces so this is going to be zero due to the fact that there are no external forces now this row has to add up so i'm just going to go ahead and add 12 plus zero and that is 12 and now the situation that we have going on is that uh we basically or you basically grab the rock uh, grab the watermelon I'm sorry but you didn't let go of the rock so now you have uh, three things that are moving together so in order to solve for the final uh, velocity I'm just gonna go ahead and create an equation and the equation is gonna be this column over here so this part right here is P final of U so P final U plus P final for the rock plus P final watermelon and that has to be equal to 12 times M. 
So now I'm just gonna go ahead and substitute times mass times velocity. So your final momentum is your mass. So that is uh, 9m times your final velocity. The rock, the mass of the rock is just 1m. So that is 1m times mass of, times final velocity. Watermelon is 2m. So that is 2m times final velocity. And this has to be equal to 12m. Now, please notice that for the final velocity, I just went ahead and did BF. All of the all of these objects, you, the rock, and the watermelon, have the same final velocity because you're moving together. And when objects are moving together, they have the same um, velocity. So let me just go ahead and add this up. So we have 9, 10, 12. Oh, so that is 12m BF is equal to 12m. And that means that your final velocity is 1 meters per second because the 12 amps cancel out. So there we go. So now um, completing this momentum chart was definitely not necessary, but let's just go ahead and do that, um, if anything, for the exercise. So we know our final velocity, so let's just go ahead and multiply. So you have a mass of 9m, so your final momentum is just going to be 9 um, m times 1. Uh, the rock has 1, so that is 1 m times 1, so that is just m. And the watermelon is 2 m, so that is uh, 2 m times 1, so that is 2 m. And as you can see, uh, they do add up to 12, so everything is good. Now, in order to figure this out, the only thing that we have to do is um, do final minus initial. So this is 1 minus 1.2, 0 0.2, going this way, and 9 minus 10.8, that is negative 1.8. And as you can see, this column adds up. So the first part of the problem is already complete. Um, and the only thing that we are going to do over here is that for part two, whatever our final velocity was on part one is going to be our initial velocity. So I'm just going to go ahead and copy that. Now let's just go back and read part two. So once you have the watermelon, you throw the rock, after which you're traveling while holding the watermelon towards the spaceship with a velocity of um, negative one and negative 1.5. Use a momentum chart to help you calculate the speed of the rock after you threw it and the angle its velocity makes with the x-axis. Okay, so let's just go ahead and do this. Basically, you have you had the watermelon and the rock, and in order to move with the watermelon in this direction, you needed to throw the rock. But we don't really know uh, the velocity of the rock or the momentum of the rock. So we're going to use this momentum chart in order to figure out this um, situation. Now, uh, whenever we were moving, so as you can see, the final state for part one is the, uh, the initial state for part two. So I'm just going to go ahead and just copy this chunk right here. And I'm just going to put it right here because our initial state is just the final state from the last part. So this is just M, this is two M and then this is 12. Now again, we are in space and there is no mention whatsoever of any external forces. So we're just going to go ahead and zero this and this has to be 12. Now, uh, we do have a final velocity and we do know the masses. So what we're going to do is just multiply those things together to see uh, what the final momentum is going to be like. So P final U is your mass. Uh, times your final velocity. So your mass is 9 times m and your final velocity is negative 1, negative 1 1.5. So this is negative 9m and 1.5 times 9 is negative 13.5m. So this is um, so let's just go ahead and negative and negative is something that looks like this. 
So negative 9m, negative 13.5m. So now for the rock, uh, oh, we don't really know the rock. We need to do the watermelon first. That's the thing that we know. P final watermelon is equal to the mass of the watermelon, final velocity of watermelon. So the mass of the watermelon is equal to 2m. Final velocity is negative 1, negative 1.5. So this is just going to be negative 2m and 2 times 1.5. I should be able to do this. Uh, negative 3m. So this is watermelon, just something like this. Negative 2m, negative 3m. And this in vector form, because as you can see, we now have a two dimensional problem, which means that we actually should put everything in vector form. There we go, that was easy enough. Um, all of this has to add up, the, um, the column has to add up, so negative nine plus something plus negative two has to be equal to 12. So let's just go ahead and figure out what that value has to be. So let's see. Um, so that is gonna be 12 minus nine minus Two. Oh. 12 minus 9 minus 2. So that is going to be equal to, let's say, oh no, I did it incorrectly. There we go. So it's uh, 12 plus 9 plus 2. There we go, of course, plus 23. Yeah, because negative, negative with a big positive is going to be equal to 12. Yeah, that's just, that sounds better. Um, so now let's just go ahead and do the other side. So negative 13 plus something plus 3 has to be equal to 0. So 13.5 uh, plus 3. So that has to be 16.5. Oh, and we need the, uh, the amps here. So this is just something that goes this way. So the final momentum for the rock is equal to 23m and 16.5m. So that is the final momentum. Now, if we want to complete this, we just need to do final minus initial. I'm just going to, I'm going to do that. I'm just going to do it at the end. First, I'm just going to solve the problem. Uh, this is the final momentum of the rock. So we just need the final velocity, final velocity of the rock. It's just P final divided by M because momentum is mass times velocity. So because we have the M's here and the rock is only one M, B final of the rock is just going to be this divided by M, which is just 23. This divided by M, which is just 16.5 meters per second. Now the problem was asking us to um, to give out our answer in terms of magnitude and direction. So even though we have the final velocity, we still need to figure it out in terms of X and Y, uh, I'm sorry, in terms of magnitude. So let's just use Socato, uh, let's just use Pythagoras theorem, I'm sorry, to figure out what this magnitude is. So that would be 23 squared plus 16.5 squared, close parenthesis, and then square root of that. So that is 28, uh, 28.3 meters per second final answer for the magnitude and then the angle I'm just gonna go ahead and use Okato again that will be tangent inverse of y divided by x so 16.5 divided by 23 35.3 Six five um, north of east. Okay, so this is the final answer for the quiz. At this point, the quiz is done. We're done with the quiz. Uh, but I think it's a good exercise to complete the momentum charts, especially because the problem was suggesting you use the momentum chart. Um, again, this part is not necessary, but I mean, we're here to learn, not to just solve a bunch of problems. Um, so first of all, 
we have all of the initials and all of the finals and we know that delta is just final minus initial so let's just go ahead and just uh, figure this out so for example this guy over here um, 2 plus what is equal to negative 2 well that would be negative 4 um, m 0 plus what is equal to negative 3 well that would be negative 3 m now um, m plus what is equal to 23 well that would be 22 0 plus what is equal to 16.5 well that would be 16.5 9 plus what is equal to negative 9 well that would be negative 18 0 plus what is equal to negative 13.5 well that would be negative 13.5 and these have to add up to zero. So if I did everything correctly, they should. Negative 18 um, plus 22 minus 4. That was equal to zero. So I did that correctly. 13.5. Oh, negative. 13.5 plus 16.5 minus 3. Yes, I did all of the calculations correctly. Um, so this is just an arrow going like this. Then this is just an arrow going like this. And then this is just an arrow just going like this. So now the momentum chart is complete. And as you can see, all of the rows add up, all of the columns add up. So this is a complete and correct momentum chart. Um, anyways, I hope this problem was useful to you. I hope that this is helping you in your studies. If it is, please make sure to leave a like and subscribe. It, it really does help this channel. We really don't know if this is going to take off. Um, so your help is much appreciated. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.